What's good, y'all? Welcome back to Collegiate Football Legion, where I'm back with another video. And today, we're going to be discussing Jawan Puma Pass. Yes, his nickname is Puma, all right? He has committed to Prairie View A&M, and I'm going to tell y'all why you should be excited for this kid. But you also need to be cautious because he has gone through a lot in his college career, and he's been messed over by coaches since he was in high school, Okay. So for those of you who aren't um, familiar with Jawan Pass, he's a 24-year-old quarterback. That means he's a senior. Okay, he's 6'4", 229 out of Columbus, Georgia. He was a four-star guy coming out of high school. And he was expected to be the next great quarterback in Louisville program history, okay, after Bridgewater and after Lamar Jackson. As a matter of fact, Lamar Jackson and Jawan were roommates while Jawan was in college. Everybody, everybody... And the Louisville faithful wanted Jawan and thought Jawan was going to be that guy who was going to carry the torch. Some people were calling him the, the next Lamar Jackson, even though they're totally built different. I would compare him more to Cam Newton as far as size and play style goes, um, or at least potential anyway. But people were saying he would be the next Cam, uh, not Cam Newton, but Lamar J Jackson. And that created a lot of pressure for him, a lot of pressure. And I think partly that is what, what that's what mostly causes demise in his career at Louisville. Um, now he came with a lot of hype coming out of high school, a lot of hype, so much that Nick Saban wanted Jawan badly. Nick Saban would visit him in person, okay, which you know he does with other recruits, but he doesn't do it with everyone, he does not do it with everyone. Um, and he even wrote Jawan a letter after Jawan decided, I'm not going to go to Bama. I'm going to go to Louisville. The reason why he didn't go to Louis Alabama is because a month before his decision, Alabama got a commitment from, maybe you know this guy, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts. So because Jalen Hurts committed before he did, Jawan decided he was going to go to Louisville where his brother was already there and was already a player on the team. Now, even with the commitment of Jalen Hurts, Nick Saban still wanted Jawan to go there. So when Jawan chose Louisville because Alabama and Louisville was his top two schools, he wrote a letter to Jawan and it said, I loved your character and your work ethic. And I'm deeply disappointed that you didn't come here. But I wish you nothing but the best. When have you ever known Nick Saban to do something like that? Nick, Nick Saban was heavy on this kid. A lot of schools were heavy on this kid. Auburn was as well. So was Clemson. Okay, he didn't choose Auburn because he actually said he didn't feel like Auburn could prepare him for the next level. Which I get it. Because Auburn's history with quarterbacks is not good at all since Cam. So I, I definitely understand that. But a lot of schools were vying for his services, man, because he had so much upside and potential when looking at his high school highlights, which hopefully if you're seeing it does not get copyrighted because I tried to upload this video a day or two ago and it got copyrighted. So I had to immediately take it down. Now, in high school, this kid was crazy competitive. He was so competitive and he was such a leader that he called his own brother and best friend out for not going hard enough in practices and in games. So he called for them to be benched. That's how much of a competitor this guy is. He expected the most out of you because he expects the most out of himself. You got to love a guy like that. He's a very hard worker and he's very competitive, which is part of the reason why Nick Saban was on him so heavily, okay? Now this guy is 6'4 with great speed. When he takes off, it's like a 2015 Cam Newton. Y'all think I'm playing when I say that, but this kid has a tremendous speed and tremendous arm strength, and he does not lack in accuracy. Physically, he has everything. So, you know, it makes you wonder, why is it that he didn't, that he didn't work out of Louisville? I'll tell you. He entered the Elite 11 camp after he made his decision to go to Louisville. And those of you who know 
about the Elite 11, you know it's ran by Trent Dilfer, Super Bowl winning quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens, um, and ESPN analyst. And he's also over the Elite 11 camp. When he got to Jawan, and he was asked about Jawan, he said the kid has never been taught a drop. He's never been taught a defense. He's never been taught, you know, basic things that he should have learned at the high school level on how to play the position. Basically, he's he was saying his his high school coaches let him get by on just his God given ability. Nobody ever took the time to teach him the fundamentals of playing that position. So when Trent got him for that Elite Eleven camp, he he said it was like someone handing me a Spanish dictionary and saying, "Go ahead." So from that alone, you could already tell things were just wasn't gonna go good for him. Okay, but he always had the determination and he always had the work ethic to keep going and, you know, try to overcome that. Now, let's get into his career. All right. In 2016, he redshirted. That was the end of that. He clearly needed that redshirt season. Okay. In 2017, he was the backup to Lamar Jackson. He was second string. And he got in a little bit when Louisville were blowing out teams. So in those in that little bit of playing time that he had that year, he had 200 plus passing yards and two touchdowns. But it was Lamar Lamar's Heisman Trophy year. So he wasn't going to see the field that much. Lamar was killing people, as y'all may very well may remember. Okay, so he wasn't going to see the field that much unless they were really blowing teams out. Now, in 2018, once Lamar left, once he became the first round pick, it was his turn. It was Jawan's turn. And people were anxious, anxiously waiting to see what he was going to do. The problem was, the majority of the talent left Louisville that year. Lamar was gone. Jair Alexander was gone. So many weapons on both sides of the ball were gone. And his first career start was against none other than Alabama. Alabama, as your first career start, and you don't have any weapons, that could not possibly go well. But he played okay, okay? In the first start against Alabama, he had two touchdowns, but he also threw for two interceptions. And Louisville, as you can imagine, got destroyed, okay? In his second career game, he struggled against Indiana State and was benched for the guy who is definitely the next Lamar Jackson, Malik Cunningham. Surprise, surprise. It's crazy how life works out sometimes. You know, people are telling you, you know, you're the next Lamar Jackson, and Malik Cunningham is actually closer than that than you are. Malik Cunningham is no joke for those of you who don't know about him. I truly do think he's the next Lamar Jackson. The play style is very similar. He he he's not as fast, but he's very fast. And he run he runs just like him. He throws just like he he's a he's a really good uh, quarterback. Probably throws better than Lamar, to be honest with you. And then he got hurt against Western Kentucky later on that year. He got his starting job back when the Louisville was 2-1. And, and they finished the season 2-10. and 10. They did not win a game since. And during that season, he did not throw for more than two touchdowns a game. Sometimes he didn't throw for any touchdowns. So at the end of that season, Bobby Petrino got fired. Okay. And he in his season stats for that year was 1,960 yards, eight touchdowns, and 12 interceptions, which is not good at all. Like I said, so many things went wrong during that year. He had no help, but I can't just put that on him just not having help. He should have played better, and he didn't. He has all the talent to do so, but when you've been given a bad head since high school, I don't really expect much to happen for you. Um if you don't have the right coaching system around you, <clears throat> which Bobby Petrino clearly didn't. In 2019, he was the starter for Notre Dame in the opener. He threw for two touchdowns in the first quarter. In the first quarter, he threw for two touchdowns. And they kept the game pretty close with Notre Dame, which opened a lot of people's eyes because they didn't expect Louisville to be anything after that 2-10 season they had the previous year. However, they did end up losing that game, but like I said, because it was so close, it opened a lot of people's eyes, and a lot of people were starting to believe in him again, okay? Now, in the next game, 
He threw four touchdowns against Eastern Kentucky. People were starting to believe again. He was getting that mojo back. He was getting the confidence up. And then he had a season and then foot surgery. And that killed everything. I felt bad for him when it happened. I really did. Because he was starting he was finally starting to gain that momentum. And then it just ended like that. So in 2020, he had two two game appearances. But don't let that confuse you. Don't even let that fool you because he only had five snaps. By then, Malik Cunningham, after that foot surgery, had come in. The next Lamar Jackson, he came in and he led Louisville to a bowl win, which nobody thought they were going to do. Eight wins and a bowl win. So Malik Cunningham is now the starter. You are not forgotten about. They gave you two game appearances and you only had five snaps, which were for negative yards. I don't know the total, but it was negative yards. You, you were done there. He was done there. They they forgot about him. They they found their next Lamar Jackson, and they were going to move on. In 20 career games, he threw for 2,545 yards and 14 touchdowns, okay? Here's why you should be excited about him. If you have the right coaching staff, y'all can get something really good out of Jawan in his last year. But it's going to take patience. Okay, he has all the tools in the world, the physical tools to succeed. He just needs a quarterback guru. He needs someone who's who knows what they're doing with him. He know he needs someone who can build confidence in him and get the best out of him. Prairie View, y'all have to be careful with this kid. All right, he he is a good talent. I'm excited for y'all because he's a really good quarterback, and I can't wait to see what he does for y'all on the next level. Now. If y'all made it to the end of the video, man, thank y'all for watching. All right, I really appreciate it. HBCU fans in general, whether you're a Prairie View fan or not, let me know what you think of this kid down below. I'm going to try to get some highlights on this video, but if I don't, copyright, okay? Please let me know what y'all think about this kid down below. Let me know what y'all think about the move. What do you think Prairie View's record is going to be now that they have this kid? Let me know all that down below, all right? Collegiate Football Legion, I'm out. Peace.